Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Third time lucky. Okay, it's my third time we're trying to get just a simple oracle message out to you guys. I'm using the journey of love. I want to pull a card from this deck and see where we are on the journey. And then we will end with a roomy oracle with some more guidance. Okay, let's have a look and see where we are on the journey of love, please. All over the place is all I can tell you. Okay. By the last two attempts. All over the place, the last two attempts. Well, okay, third time lucky. We have Yin Yang Lover. It's a very nice card. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's have a look in the book. Interesting, because I've put it on top of the Power of Intention book here, which is actually... Uh, my phone is best in the king's bit to stop it from sliding. I want to show you the colours. So, I said let's have a look in the book. So, let's have a look in this book first before... <laughs> the spaces between the words. That's where I've opened up to in the journey of love. Let's have a look um, in this book and see... what the words are okay the spaces between the words how does the universal all creating field of intention look at life the field of intention which is responsible for all creation is constantly giving in fact it knows no bounds to its giving it just keeps on converting pure formless spirit into a myriad of material forms furthermore this field of intention gives in unlimited supplies okay so furthermore this field of intention gives in unlimited supplies there is no such concept as shortage or scarcity when it comes to the originating source so we're looking at two major conceptu conceptualizations when we think of the universal's mind's natural abundance the first is that it's perpetually giving and the second is that it offers an infinite supply. The power of intention is perpetually giving and infinite, so it seems obvious that you'll need to adopt these same two attributes if you're to fulfil your own personal intention to live successfully and attract abundance into your life. What should your message back to the universe be if you want to be abundance and success rather than strive for it? Your source is abundant and you are source and you are your source. Therefore, you must communicate this back. Since your source is always serving and giving and you are your source, then you must be always in a, in a state of serving and giving. This source can only work with you when you are in harmony with it. And I want to kind of stop there because we're talking about the yin yang lovers here, the divine masculine and the divine feminine okay right let's go my belly let's go to my belly because it's really rumbling i will deal with my belly after this reading card number eight the yin yang lover the force of attraction is stronger than your conscious control there is no need to fight this inner genius you can learn to speak its language instead what is it that captures you that pulls you close that holds so much light for you. Why fight it? Don't step away from what you really, don't step away from what you really love to grab hold of. Okay, that doesn't, don't step away from what you really love to grab hold of a second prize. Why not claim your first prize? It is there waiting for you. It is yours alone, beloved. No one else can claim your own divine birthright for you. Be yielding and let your desire fill your body, your heart and your mind. You don't have to fight for what is already yours. It will come to you through the field of attraction that emanates from your own heart. It is not a question of worthiness or deservedness. It is not a question of trying to work out what you need or want. Your heart already knows. Listen, if you still can't hear, then just feel. You'll get the gist of it soon enough. This oracle has a message for you. No matter whether you seem to be heading closer to your goal or further away, 
you are making real spiritual progress and what you want is the same thing that is wanting you. What you are seeking is seeking you. It's only a matter of time before you get it. Okay, let's read this poem. The moment when to fill my heart again is measured not in time or sweet remorse, nor tears that wash away unbridled pain or morning's light which sings its soft retort. Such love has slept through storm and winters long. No call could break the stillness embrace or hasten change before the season's song <clears throat> unfurls its melody and words so chaste. Empowered thus, I find myself compelled to cast aside emotions dormant still. My feelings spoke from depths, the answer dwelled, the answer welled. No need or past the emptiness to feel. At one, our touch has opened hearts anew of patience born, there waits a love so true. It's so beautiful because yesterday was the first day of spring and um, there's going to be a lot of activity that was predicted months ago regarding uh, this springtime. Okay. Let's finish with these beautiful colours. Look how they're all coming in. <clears throat> Let's finish with uh, a message from the Rumi Oracle. My throat feels really dry. Okay, Rumi, can you finish off this uh, this oracle message for us, please? <clears throat> I've got the card. <clears throat> Enter the Garden of Delights. Card number 28. Are you aware that sweetness is found everywhere in town? Are you aware that winter is gone and, and spring has come around? Are you aware that sweet basil and the carnation are whispering in the garden and laughing about how simply everything is found? Are you aware the nightingale has come back from its flight, singing out messages of love to spread delight with every sound? Everything in the garden is granted the right from the divine court to appear for our delight. Everything is here to make the earth green and alive as a haven for our life. What remains buried in the soil will always endeavour to reach out. No one truly alive can ever be pawned to a prison or a tomb. Rumi. There is a sweet spot when entering the garden of delights a moment where the senses have gorged themselves upon beauty and become heavy with their fullness, slowing the mind so that it can perceive the divine beloved dancing behind the veils of nature. But first comes essential feasting. Blooming orchids arrest the gaze with their startling and strange beauty. Nectar from the ripest fruits of the garden drips, luscious and sweet, upon a savouring tongue. Hungry for gossip, the years shamelessly eavesdrop upon the birds in melodic conversation. They sing of greatest, most passionate love and boundless living joy. The ears open wide to take it all in. The craving for touch is sated by rough texture, textured bark falling from the ancient trees, soft dewy grasses cool in the shade. The crunching leaves making their sounds under the hot sun and dancing feet, and the caress of that moonlight upon bare shoulders, with weight of its own like a silken wrap placed just so by a caring lover's hand. The breeze, the very breath of the beloved earth mother, is sweet with scent of lavender and jasmine, warmed by the sun father. Oh, drink it in until your arms raise themselves to heaven, your head, your head tilts, eyes rolling back in your head and your sacred animal body is mindless and in love. The Garden of Delights, narcotic in effect, lulling the senses from tension into sacred languor that love may be experienced. Let us rest here in the midst of so much life where the goodness of life is felt 
and the heart is free from any prison of pain or doubt. Come be in the garden with me now. Let us be free and feast to our heart's content. You have been granted entry into sacred space, a myrab, a sanctuary for worship. When the soul is well acquainted with love, life becomes a temple of love. The sacred space in which the soul can grow powerful through expansive worship of love. You are being invited by your spiritual brother Rumi to enter into life, to commit to coming alive, even if at times this feels deeply challenging. Sometimes a part of you may rather stay locked in an illusion of security for a time, perhaps expressed through the preference for what is known over what is unknown, what is familiar and comfortable, compared to that which is unfamiliar or uncomfortable. To tussle with the parts of us that would deny aliveness is a natural part of growth. It can seem so risky, with so much potential. It doesn't say so much, it says with such potential for heartache. So it can seem so risky, with such potential for heartache. And yet, what could be more heart-wrenching than the slow death of a precious human soul suffocated by fear and inertia. That is the greatest risk of never really and fully being born into this world of wonders. So Rumi is your midwife, there to ensure full spiritual birth. He is standing at the threshold with you now and you are being asked to cross this threshold from the life you have been living into the aliveness that is flickering and glowing at your feet. It is love's wild, hot embers at your sacred feet. They will erupt at any moment into a holy inferno, taking hold of you and igniting you from within, transforming you into living fire. To come alive requires shedding of so much adherence to the fear of death. The great brother whispers wisdom into your heart. You have heard it, felt it already. The fear of death is so much more terrible than death itself. Nothing is dying in you but fear. So nothing is dying in you but fear, so the heart can live more freely. Death and life are twin angels dancing together in communion with the sacred. Interesting, the yin and the yang. <clears throat> So death and life are twin angels, dancing together in communion with the sacred. They are not opposed. They bring the soul aliveness and make the garden of delights possible. They bring the season of the soul that foster growth and take the appearance of dying away, which is actually part of the cycle of life, again and again and again. You have been through much death, dear one, around you, within you. You have known this dark angel, that is why you are so full of life. Your attempts to stay as you have been, to render something in your life immobile or impervious to change, have failed. Let us celebrate. There is no delight in frozen moments long since past. Why try to feast upon such food? It will not nourish you anywhere near as deeply and fully as fresh from the other morsels of life. Come let us taste all that is on offer. We drink, we drink headedly and sate our deepest thirst. Let us enjoy the richness of the meal in gratitude for its preparation and awe at the skill involved in such masterful creation. Do not let the memory of death starve you of your participation in life. Do you hold on still to that which is past? I will soothe you with a loving touch upon your back and yet gently I will turn your head to the right and urge you to see the rising sun. Your life is blessed, you see. I want you to know this now. I want you to accept this now. Let those horrors of the past be gone. They are no more than phantoms. The garden is here now to be touched, tasted, seen, heard, felt, inhaled and loved. This oracle comes to you with a message. A new day is dawning for you. This is a time when the past 
will very soon cease to have any hold over you. Celebration is imminent. You are invited into the golden light of divine plenty. Put your worries behind you now and step into your divine inheritance where all is sorted according to kindness and grace. That's a beautiful reading. Okay, guys, I will catch up with you soon. Until then, take care. Much love. Bye for now.